Hello, class. Well, here's a drawing I'm going to show you how I drew in this video. And if you had a, you know, little laugh at seeing it, well, that was the point of it. You know, before I jump in and start showing you how I drew this all together, I do want to talk compositionally about the image and why I created it. Obviously, it's a little bit different than what I have done in the past. Um, you know, every year um, there is a competition by the American Society of Architectural Illustrators for, for rendering. And they have different categories panned uh, in the computer and so on and so forth, which I've submitted for in the past and on occasion won a prize. Uh, but this year they had something new. They had uh, Envision the Future of Architecture, something like that as a new category. So I submitted a, you know, a typical drawing that I might typically do, but I decided after seeing that, that I would go ahead and, and work something up for fun, really to do something different. And, and that's what this is. Um, now, again, this is supposed to sort of be tongue in cheek. It's supposed to be funny. And of course, a joke is uh, not funny if you tell why it is. So I'm going to leave the interpretation of this drawing up to you. Hopefully you enjoy it. But before I start, to really get into how this was composed. I did want to talk about co composing this image uh, briefly and, and how to make it a joke because I did spend time working on it. And I think even though, you know, uh, there is some elements of this drawing that are humor humorous, it, uh, it took time to get there and still very thoughtful and still looks nice. So all of those things together, you know. Um, one of the challenges I had was I really wanted it to still be a beautiful drawing, even though it sort of implies some chaos or some danger sort of in the area. Um, and so that was a bit tricky. I think I've been successful on that. But at the same time, you know, a joke has a setup and it has a punchline. Um, and so really compositionally, the starship itself is sort of the punchline. Obviously, the suburban homes on the ends, are that's the, the real punchline. So I had to make that big and in your face. Otherwise, it wouldn't have been a joke. But at the same time, it couldn't be the first thing you see, right? So like setting the sun off to the right and be it very, have a lot of contrast in that sun. Um, and then having the biggest suburban homes on the lower left-hand side. I'd like to think there's some success in that comp. Uh, compositionally that you sort of take in the whole image, you understand what's going on, you see the ring of the starship, you understand how that is sort of future architecture, and then you sort of digest the suburban homes and hopefully it hits you in your face. So we'll see. Obviously, do I think this is what the judges were looking for? Probably not. The competition hasn't hasn't uh, gone on yet. If you are watching this relative to posting it, you could submit yourself. If they like it, they like it. If they don't, they don't. It certainly was fun and something different to do for myself. You know, the reason why I decided to take sort of the more tongue-in-cheek route is because when I think about the future of architecture, I don't think I was thinking what the judges were, were necessarily looking for, which is they were looking for a unique drawing of architecture, right? And that could be whatever you think the futurism is. But when I think about the future of architecture, honestly, I think of the best practices of really nice communities that we've built throughout history. You know, they're walkable, they're not too dense, but they're not um, uh, so spread out that you don't have lots of activity. Um, you know, I from the northeast of the United States, and there's, you know, for the United States, we have re the oldest cities here. It's those cities, those the oldest parts, the, the nicest parts to walk around, the mix of uses, sustainable buildings, lots of a variety of different styles of interesting architecture, parks spread out, intermixed in between there. Those types of communities, you know, that's where the wealthiest people currently live. The oldest part of the communities is where, where wealthiest tend to live. Those are often thought of as the nicest. And I don't know that that's going to change. You know, I'm sort of, again, this is, is a playful image, but if, if I think we ever colonize space for living, uh, you know, obviously vacations and explorations, those are, those are different things. But if we're living there, you know, it's not probably not the well off that are going to be living there. That's my opinion. The, the people who are well enough off, if we still have an unequitable society, they're going to stay on Earth where they can breathe without space masks and, and you know, take part in this rich history and, and parks and all, all these things, not sort of having artificial parks like we see in this image here. So, uh, you know, it's going to be the less well-off who end up taking 
uh, you know, sort of being forced off the planet, if that ever happens. Obviously, this is far into the future. But since, anyway, since my vision of the future is really just classic, uh, you know, design principles, I didn't think that was going to make a good entry to this particular uh, focus of the competition. So I decided to do this, this instead. So I should, I should jump into it. I do want to say, as I'm getting into it, um, you know, this is, there is some modeling work. I'm going to start really quickly reviewing that, but mostly it's a Photoshop exercise, you know, to get some something with this much interest and depth and, and everything else. It's just a lot of Photoshop work. It's not hard work. I'm going to walk you through. There's several pieces of the model. That's key. It's not just one piece of the model that makes this. And there's a, lots of images that make up these planets and suns and stars and, and all of those other things, mostly through NASA. The great thing is, NASA being a government agency, those are all easily available. So before I get into the Photoshop work, just really quickly, I do just want to mention I did model this in SketchUp, and you can see it's here. It's pretty standard, you know, for the suburban house. I need to have the gable forward just because that's so iconic. I wanted that to like be very clear. It's a sort of a gabled roof house. So so that's turned forward. Of course, many times in suburbia they are turned the other way, but that's perfectly fine. Um, the porch, you know, not that lot of suburban homes have porches, but I thought that was also sort of funny. So I wouldn't explain any part of the joke, but just one little detail. I didn't have to have a porch, but like having a porch in space is sort of funny. So it's just sort of like a secondary funny piece, I think, there for that. So so I do mention that. And then, of course, I didn't need to, I feel the, felt the need to also show the garage showing a suburban house. Uh, oh, I should also say I titled this, I titled this in the submission something like um, Pleasant Valley uh, starship or something like that. So again, just, you know, uh, sort of playing off words like you might see in suburbia itself, even though you're in space and there's no valleys at all, but who, no one cares about that in marketing, right? So, so, you know, this is, this is the marketing garage, the gable roof, the porch, all those things you see there. Of course, starships, it's round. I don't know if, if you guys are watching this, you don't know much about science fiction. They, they tend to be round because they're rotating and the rotation actually acts as artificial gravity, right? That's why they're, you know, if I'm overthinking it, that's why the roofs are attached because the way these are spinning, the gravity would act for so you standing on the floor of the houses, right? And then of course in the center, it's sort of green space. I don't know, is it farming? Is it a park? Is it for air? It could be for anything. And then I just <clears throat> interpreted, I figured, you know, if this is suburbs and this is a park, well, maybe that's like the city. So the internal shape, I sort of made like a, a tower to, to replicate sort of the inner urban environment. Quickly, how I set up. Of course, I composed. I looked at several different settings for how I wanted this to look, and this is the position that I finally settled on. And then, um, once I had it all modeled up, I ended up rendering it in Enscape uh, through through um, through SketchUp here. And I'm going to show you this. I'll, I'll jump into Photoshop actually. Um, and I'm going to show you all the outputs that I started with from Enscape and SketchUp to because this this is really key as I jump into it. Um, the first is a standard rendering. You know, I had the sun. I sort of worked on the position of the sun to get the the light hitting in the back and making sure most of it was well lit, but still had some really bright spots and some dark spots as I thought might be in space. Uh, I did set the background. Uh, to black. I had to put in a black image, just pure black I got from Photoshop so I could get the pure black here and that's sort of uh, what the sky box is reflecting. But the key is that this is not, even though this is the most standard one and the one that most of the rendering is based off of, this is not the only output from SketchUp slash Enscape that I used in the rendering. So I wanted to really be able to control the lighting. Um, in Photoshop. So I actually took, I set the time of day to nighttime. And this is the same lighting settings as in the last image because there's no sun, pretty much all you see is the lighting. As you'll see, when I overlay this in Photoshop, it allows me to control just through transparency how much bright or light I want to control the look I want to really have. Uh, could I have done that perhaps all in Escape? Maybe, but it was so much easier just to do it in Photoshop. And then again, what I ended up doing, this is also at nighttime, that there's no sun in this rendering. Um, the difference though, instead of having uh, the background set to black, I set it to white, so uh, you see more of the tones. And the reason why I did this again is because I thought the original image might have too much contrast in it. And if that was too distracting or distracting and, and 
a part of a drawing I didn't want to be, I could use this layer to really control how strongly the sun was reading. So, so this is the base. This controls how much the artificial lighting works. And this really allowed me to control how much the sun um, sort of controlled on there, just through these three layers. Uh, and then I did have a fourth one. This is not through Enscape. It's just I set the, um, the background in SketchUp to magenta just so I could mask out because I needed to, to just get the starship itself. And so I could select the pink. As you'll see, I'll go through the steps here in a moment. And it uh, allowed me to do that pretty easily. So I, it took these four layers just for, for the output. Uh, of course, in the final rendering, uh, in this one that has many, many layers, as we'll see, we'll, we'll go through all of these one by one. I'll just sort of pull, pull that guy off to the side. And um, the way I started, I know this sort of before I even start drawing, I'm getting late, but I actually started with the base rendering. Um, you, I just started with the file itself. You know, I'm going to unlock the layer. Um, let's call it main rendering or starship or whatever. And, and, and one of the things I ended up doing pretty early on as I put all the starship in the groups. I like using groups. I'll use groups throughout this. So I'll call the starship group and I'll drop this right in there. And, and I sort of had a, I roughly create the, the composition of the image. So I think what I ended up doing is I ended up just basically using mainly the height as given, but I took, I took this over and shifted it pretty far over to the right uh, like this. And then I just drew drew in this space. I think it's pretty much what I did. I might have adjusted the size slightly differently, but uh, you, you can go ahead and do that yourself. Of course, I have this blank transparent space here, so I'm quite certain I made a new layer. I'm going to pull outside the group. Uh, so I'll let this be the base. So I'm going to pull it to the top and then move the group to the top, just sort of the easy way to get that layer control there. Um, go to this layer, just do control A to select all, and I'll just fill it all black. Sort of an easy way just to get a black base and keep sort of the space like look. I, I will, you know, of course, go in and fill this in with spacey stuff here in a few moments. Um, and then I just did the rest for the, the layers. So, uh, you know, I took in the one that was just about lights and pasted it on top. Um, oh, yeah, I did have an issue I forgot when I exported these originally um, my computer couldn't quite handle uh, the lighting effects and so I had to um, do those smaller but proportionally it's the same so it'll it'll go in like that um, and the same with I believe was with this one so I'll just come in here and paste that on top I'm just turning off the layer as I do it just so I can easily snap to the the pages and get this scaled in just like that. And then what I'll do is I'll just uh, actually I'll do the, the last mask layer as well because I do think I had this one set up. I just adjusted the SketchUp output to fit in exactly. So I'm going to turn this guy on these three layers here. They're sort of uh, not I should have put them all in first because we can see they're misplaced um, and I'm sure I didn't shift it over to the left the original one until after I had all four in but uh, you know that's what we're doing this time around so we'll get this here and I should just be able to shift it over and it snapped into place so there we go now we'll go ahead in a moment and adjust uh, all the transparencies and things to make these work together. The reality is I did that over time as I added all the elements, but I sort of know the answers now. But before I do that, I want to show you how I got rid of the pink, you know, because I, I made the, the clipping mask work right away. So I went up to the group layer and basically made a clipping mask for that. I came down to uh, this pink, the magenta here, and just used like my eyedropper uh, I'll sample all layers. I won't choose contiguous there. And I'll just do this. So now all the pink is selected. So now when I go up to the Starship group and go to the mask, I'll just go edit, fill black again, because that's already set. And it just masked out all the area that was pink, which is now all the area that was sort of black and all of that. Now I don't, I don't need the SketchUp layer anymore, because obviously it's not as rendered quite as nicely. So I'll just turn that off. It was purely there just for that one step. I can turn on the black background, have a little line there. 
looks like, but I will get rid of that as the as the space goes about. And, uh, and basically what I just did again over time, I just changed the transparency of like the lighting to make it to make it, uh, you know, have more light or less light. I think I also set it to um, I might I don't remember exactly which setting I, I would have used it. I'll go check that up really quick and let you know uh, on what I did about these. Um, but again, if I go to my lighting, you can see I can control control how how much it glows because this, this is actually the light. I should mark the layer there light and this is actually for just contrast purposes. That's that layer. So um, you can see there we go. That's the, the basic of the starship with these three layers, one layer mask and a, and a background. Um, after that, uh, you know, it was just a bunch of Photoshop work. So let's get started on that. Okay, so again, there was, there's lots of layers uh, to this in Photoshop. I think what I actually did was, I'm gonna take the contrast one here, I'm gonna pull it down. I meant to keep that set to normal, um, but I kept this pretty low, something like 25%. And I think, not that it will matter, but I think I did add some sort of properties or uh, on it. I did um, probably levels right here that's levels and I had it set to just go down to the layer and I think I just sort of controlled it now we're not seeing much because the light layer I should have adjusted first and actually I think I ended up with having this pretty full strength the way that I got rid of the black is by going to lighten so I go to the light in there it basically gets rid of the black it keeps all all the light so, so I get those sort of set up. Now I can sort of go to levels here and um, adjust it as needed. So anyway, you can see this layer is, I'm just on the levels for this contrast layer. I'm just slightly making many adjustments, probably difficult to see, but I think that's good. You know, you can play with these things so, so much as you go on your own. There's no one right answer there. Now, there'll still be a lot of work I will have to do on this thing as I match the rest of the background, but I did early on know I wanted to, to do one other thing. And I wanted to sort of give it some tonal quality of space, not just purely black. So I just downloaded this image from NASA. I'm just gonna copy it. I'm gonna paste it into here. It comes in small, it doesn't, doesn't matter. I'm gonna pretty much make it as big as I need to. I just need to cover the Starship completely, you know, move it or move it around to sort of get some color variations in here. And um, since I only want the color, I'm just going to set it to color. We can see it now the Starship has taken on those reflections. Of course, they are still way too strong. And so I turned down the transparency quite a bit, but it was meant just to give that little bit of tonal quality to it, to, to make it feel like it's going to add space already. And then, um, you know, I know I did um, other things as well. Um, yeah, the the I know early on I think I just made a new layer, and I filled it all black because it still sort of felt bright to me. And it will we'll change all these things. I did keep the light up 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 top, and I went to something like hard light, um, and I just turned this like way down pretty low something like that just again it's just tonal quality change now it's not the only tones that will add to this image but it's about as far as it can go without stopping and doing the rest of the background so this is in a pretty good space you can see just for the starship itself it already has all of these layers to it i'll add one or two more as the image goes but we'll, we're going to start working on the background so I'm just going to grab some imagery. Again, a lot of these images I uh, throughout this drawing I just grabbed from NASA's website. So um, I'll come here. I'll make a new group. I just copied and pasted that one. Well, I haven't pasted it yet. Um, I will in a second. I'm just going to say background stars. Just make a group for it and paste it in. Again, there's going to be so many things on top of it. Um, you know, the scale and the sizing, and even if it's not perfect uh, and a little pixelated, it, it all works out pretty well. So I'll even stretch this 
this way. I'm just holding shift to get it a proportional. Um, and we'll stretch it that way. Um, I'm not sure if I moved it because I think I s ended up setting that as like the the sun center. So I know, I'll, again, I might have to make adjustments later on, but that bright spot was the start of sort of the sun's bright spot. So I'm going to have to sort of offset it that way and uh, really just end up pulling this nice and wide. You know, I do want it to basically cover the whole thing. Actually, you know what I ended up doing? That's right. I don't. I, I think I ended up shifting it over this way, and I knew I was going to have this hard edge here. Um, so what I ended up doing is I made a layer mask for this layer, and I just took my marquee tool and just did some set mount, just skinny amount into it here, and I went to gradient um, in black and white, or I just went to black. Uh, uh, in what yeah black and white or black and transparent either way would work and I drew a, a line straight over and I just faded it out right so faded into black now this is not the only set of stars I used um, so when I keep overlaying this that fade will sort of disappear and, and end up working pretty well because I did just get a, a standard star field as well here's the image and I pasted that right on top of this layer again it comes in misscaled and this time this layer I do want to have sort of fitting in the entire box um, and so if it's not quite proportional um, perfectly fine in that case we'll just get it to go over and what i did is i think i changed this to like lighten to sort of mix the colors together and turn down the transparency a bit because these stars are sort of further back in field so you can see uh, it's already starting to to blend together uh, a fair amount and as we go it'll continue to do this and then I, I did some self painting on this stuff too so so I made a new layer and I, I got like a purple color I'm gonna assume maybe I don't know if this was the purple color I exactly used uh, and I went to my paintbrush and I got a nice big paintbrush bigger than that and, and I want to have soft I want to be the soft round edges you'll see and I, I got something really really huge um, probably even bigger than that. I don't remember what I used. Something, something like this, and I just went sort of across the screen like that, just to to give it a fade. Um, and then I just, of course, gave it a huge transparency. Um, and again, that was all just to sort of give it more depth, more richness of color, and 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 things like that. And I'll do more of that. I know I did this for the background, but again, I'll I'll just every once in a while, quick little painting things like that on on various layers as we get going to add color. All right, so the next thing I think I'll work on is this planet that was down over here in the lower right. And so I will come in here and I'm just gonna, for temporary collapse some of these layers, I'll go back into them, but I'm gonna make a new group, call it planet. Perhaps it's Earth. So and actually I started with a picture of Earth, again from NASA. I'm just gonna sort of magic wand the black and select inverse to get the planet itself and copy it and uh, paste this into this layer. Well, I want to scale this up pretty large um, and keep it proportional. Um, so in essence, I think it was pretty much close to the, you know, I pretty much went halfway, the peak of the, the earth was nearly halfway through the image and then it went extended way over to the behind the starship so you can see really quite large I don't remember how large they made it but very very big something like that something approximately like that that's certainly close enough and I can move this background image if I need to later on but that's pretty good I think you know not that you really need to do this but I, I ended up flipping I went to transform and flipped horizontally um, just to make it not, I, I wanted to make it like, is it earth? Is it not? Who knows um, exactly what it is. So, so we'll put that guy there. And then to further take it away from planet earth, I actually went to and downloaded a picture of Mars. So here we go. I'm going to do the same thing. Magic wand, the black select inverse and just copy this guy here, the whole whole of Mars and paste this in. And I can make this really large in scale, 
I'm just doing control T to scale this up. I don't even know. I'm probably just going to type in a number because it's probably like 3,000, maybe larger. Okay, maybe maybe not 3,000. Maybe 1,000. There we go. I need it to be bigger than the Earth, but it didn't, doesn't need to be perfect. That's close enough. I'll just go from the corner at this point. I just want to make sure the entirety of Earth is covered, and I want to get some of these craters and things. I think in the in the image that sort of look cool. And what I did is I actually put this below Earth. I made a layer mask for Mars. I, I, I control clicked on that layer just to select the Earth itself. And I'm gonna select inverse, control shift die if you wanna do that. Uh, and then filled it black, the mask to get rid of the part that I don't need like that. So, so it filled that way and then I set Earth layer to um, just to be an overlay like that you can see now it sort of has some of the continents and the water in there but you start to see some of the the craters as well and then what I did is I made a new layer on top and I'm just going to control click the earth again to get the same area and I'm just going to fill this white and set it to have uh, a bunch of transparency or set the opacity way down is another way of saying that something like that and we start to get some of the golden tones now i'm going to move on probably to the moon now um, the reality is again there's still more work to, color correction to be done in this highlighting once i get the sun in there and, and various other things but um you know just three layers as the base layers for this planet to start to sort of make a planet that never existed just by using Earth and Mars and, and playing around with a bunch of things. So it was fun. And I'll do the same for the moon. So so watch this. So for the moon, I of course, went back to NASA for a bunch of things. And I started with the moon, our moon. I always found it interesting that the only moon without a name or sort of a moon that's called moon is our moon. And of course, as we know of many more moons now, but I'll just select that, same way I've been doing the rest. Um, I will go ahead and make another group for this first. I'll call it Moon. And paste that into that group. And sort of start to set the scale off in the top right side. And it wants to be pretty big, something like that. Now the thing like the Earth is I added a bunch of layers. And again, I was just sort of going around NASA and I sort of found this picture of Saturn that I really like the stripes of. So I figured, hey, why don't I try to throw this in here, which I did. So um, I'm going to have to delete a lot of this because I don't need the rings or anything. Like I said, I use it. So I'm just going to draw a marquee tool and copy and paste this in here and then scale it up. So pretty much the stripes, the stripied area covers the entirety of the moon. Just like this, and if I can, if I control click on the moon, you can see here I'm just going to get those stripes. If I if I do a select inverse and then delete it around, now I've got just Saturn there, and I just used a blending tool, you know, to give the moon some stripes. I could even, uh, and I think I may have even originally rotated the stripes a little bit, perhaps to mat match the angles of the drawing, but I'm going to leave it like this. And then believe I don't. I was just goofing around. I actually took another image of Earth. And uh, I basically pasted that on top of it as well. Actually, that trick wasn't working, so I might have to select the earth like this. And it doesn't have to be perfect, right? Just trying to get some textures and things like that. So I'm just using a circle there, and I pasted that on, on it, scaled it into place. Can probably be pretty close to the scale if I wanted to. Otherwise, if it's a little off, I can always just control click the base layer, select inverse again, and delete what I don't need to get it in place there. And um, let's see, what did I do now? I think I did something like color dodge. You can see it's really just adding all this richness to it. I, way too much, of course. Got to turn the transparency way down. Sort of make this thing that sort of might be the moon, but isn't clearly the moon. Again, that was the intent. Of course, the colors are sort of all off. Uh, so what I ended up doing is 
I made a layer on top. I just selected the moon area and I took a brown color, pretty deep brown, something like this, filled it in, select foreground color there to do the fill in and just, oops, I don't know what I hit there and then changed it to color. So the whole object just takes all of those that entirety of color and then you know again there'll be more work that i need to do on this as i keep going i actually think i set this to some transparency perhaps i'm not sure but anyway i'll keep going there's going to be highlights and color changes and all these things but i got to add the next main element before i come back to all of these which really is the last main element which is the sun so let's get working on that i'm just gonna close these things down and make a new group for the sun or star, the main star, whatever you want to call it, because who knows if it's Earth or not. So, of course, the first thing I did was I grabbed a picture of the sun, just big and bold like this. We'll do a bunch of things to tone this down. Very similarly, I, uh, I'll just select the black, inverse the selection, copy and paste it, come over here and paste this in. Um, I'm, I'm not too worried. I'm going to do so much work to this sun layer that the little black edges and all that, that'll come. It's really just about the texture uh, and things that I need. And I want to do, I want to center over this sort of galactic center because the I want the, to feel like the stars are sort of emanating from it. And uh, I will scale it up from uh, from that point to be about the size that I feel like it should be. Probably a little big there. Don't need to be too big by the time I add all the rest of the elements. So maybe something like that will work well. And um, I ended up just, you know, doing a bunch of layer tricks. I, I did get um, this cloud. I just got this from Google. Um, and I just want the cloud part of it. So I'll have to add layer selection to get rid of the blue. There we go. That's pretty good. Select inverse and copy this cloud and just put this right on top of the sun in a couple positions. Um, so something like this, I can scale it and rotate it sort of as I sort of see fit. Uh, I think I sort of put one on one side and I sort of like that and I duplicated the layer. And I sort of put one over here, something like that. So it's almost like, I don't know, is the sun exploding? I don't know, something like that. That was uh, the intent there. Um, I think I'll just stretch this one out, actually, a, sort of a proportionally. I think I actually had some of the cloud going off completely to the side. Of the image not that it has to be the same you know just something like that whatever you feel is good it's a little asymmetrical there maybe i'll flip this edit transform flip horizontally i don't remember again i can't remember every last step that i did beforehand yeah that sort of that sort of produces a nice effect there we'll go with that um and then what I did is I wanted to try to obviously add clouds, clouds to the back of this thing, which was the hardest. I tried to to do something with this hole in the sky, uh, something like that. I think I have this layer in here. I don't exactly remember. I'm just going to control this and paste this in here. I'm going to move it behind the layer with the sun. I want to keep it in the group there. Um, it's way over here. It's this tiny little thing. I sort of wanted to get this sort of look, you know, behind it uh, with clouds sort of coming down. And I might have actually even squished it a little bit because it's sort of meant to look long and, and linear. All right. So sort of matching the cl clouds in the foreground a bit in length. And then I had to add sort of a clipping mask to this i've got to guess what i did is um i'm going to fill this all black actually this clipping mask all black to start and just get rid of it you'll see what i'll do here in a second 
and then I'm going to take an oval sort of like this here I should center it more on the Sun and then let's try this I'm going to edit fill white and it, it'll bring this part back that part of the cloud black right so so I can shift it as needed and then what I'm going to do is I'll deselect I'm going to go to filter and I'm going to blur and I'm going to go to Gaussian blur and if I put this really high you can see it starts to to fade out the black into the white and sort of pulls off the clouds and gets sort of the clouds in the background just like that. I don't remember what exactly what I used, but that's sort of pretty close there. So now it's sort of like this hole in the sky. Um, and I think I ended up with some transparency. I think I said, let's see, what did I do? Something like overlay sort of merges into the stars and then, you know, however transparent or not transparent that you might want. So obviously some of these things are, are all over the place. I'm going to go to the sun layer and change its blending mode. I think I used exclusion. I know it, it turned it sort of blue, but we'll take care of that in a moment. And the reason is what I ended up doing is I had a layer underneath it that I had set to sort of white and I did sort of the did sort of the same thing. I sort of took a oval through the center of that sun and filled it white. And blurred it out to give it a bright spot right in the center. Blur, Gaussian blur, but not as not nearly as strong. Turn that way, that blur way down a lot. So, you know, I'm just starting to build up the layers here. And then what I did to add more depth, I made a new layer again. Put it below everything. Oops, keep it inside the group. You know, this is really the art of drawings like this. I'm not going to get it exactly, but it's just adding all these layers up. I did, I did sort of a bigger oval. Oops, don't want to do that. Didn't want to undo that. I meant to hit that tool so I could just sort of move it. And I filled this white as well. And uh, what I did is I went to the smudge tool and I sort of blended it all in. We'll take a look at um, smudge tool. I, I tried a couple different. I think I did some artistic brushes. You can see, whoops, I gotta do control D to deselect. I don't think it's gonna matter. But you can see when I smudge this up down in the sky, it's just sort of clouding, giving the clouds and the, this white spot and everything, just blending it all in like this. So some of it was with this, and some of it was with, I think, just a standard brush. Um, I really did pull some quite high and made it somewhat strong. That was just my my take on it. You'll see, I'm going to totally fade this back in a moment. Um, so it was like this bright spot sort of emanating up from the sun right here. Just by smudging this out. You know, someone's clicking a bunch of times to get these streaks to sort of come up like this. It probably ended up, I probably blurred it a bit too. But anyway, when I take the transparency, of course, when I take the transparency way down, you can see it just sort of brightens up the sky and you get these little streaks going in there. And that was basically how I set up the sun. Of course, a bunch of color work and everything else was done as well. But those are those are the main elements. So let's work on, you know, you can see again, just a recap mid stage here. I've got a bunch of layers to to create these elements, which really is moon, sun, earth, and starship, but each one has a bunch of elements. Now we shift gears into adding a bunch of layers to control this all tonally together. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to the group just before, um, not the sun, not the planet, and not the moon here, but actually just above the moon, I'm gonna make a new group to do this color work. And I'm going to start by making a new layer right in here. Basically, basically going to, I picked this color 
brown. I want we want it to be golden, you know, sort of indicative of a the golden color of the star to a certain degree. You can see the numbers I used there if you want to see this, but um, I just filled the whole page in that color. Fill, in this case, I have it as my background color, so make sure I do background color. We get that set over there, and of course, I just changed the blending mode to color, and we can start to see, okay, well, there we go. It's already starting to just turn everything tonally, in the background anyway, to be the same thing. Now this is obviously too bright, so we gotta adjust the transparency quite a bit, something like that. We'll keep coming in and adjusting these things as needed. Um, and I think I put a layer mask on it. Actually, I know I put a layer mask on it. And I went to gradient. And I actually went to like a radial gradient. So radial gradients here. Because I wanted the edges to be over on this side and with the starship more of the natural colors were here. I wanted um, the colors to be more of the brown tones and stuff that I'm working with. So I sort of start on the sun and sort of pull off like that. Oops, I did it in the reverse order. Let me reverse that um, reverse button right there. I could have flipped the foreground and background colors as well. We'll just do that there. And so so now it sort of keeps more of the brown tones on this side and allows some of the original colors on the left side to shine. And then I, of course, you know, I want to, the way I work is I tend to make a new layer and I'm going to select everything and fill it black because I'm like, oh, it's too bright. So I'll just do, do a black fill like that and turn the transparency down just to tone it down. You know, something like that. And then some of the these things start to look nice. They're still highlighting and things I need to do, but now this is too too dark in here. So we'll just go ahead and correct that by making another layer here. We're gonna do something not not unlike I did before, which is set a nice big circle, fill it white to, to sort of undo it. Fill it white and blur it, blur it out when I'm done. I'm going to set the transparency here first, though, I think. So we'll uh, change the transparency down somewhat here and filter, blur, Gaussian blur. It's going to have to be pretty high. Yeah, something like that. And actually, now that I've set all of these tones, I realize this thing wants to stay pretty much without opacity because you can see the color. So you can see I'm getting the bright spots in the center, you know, uh, and and uh, various other things. I'm just looking, and I don't know that I did it exactly the same. I'm taking a look at some of these clouds. I want to take the transparency down a bit on that one and maybe this one as well. Maybe less so on that one, but just a little bit like that. Um, you know, so we pull that layer up front. There we go. Turn this down. I need to blur that more. Filter. So a lot of this, obviously, it, it took me um, a while to try these different layers and try these different techniques. And even even having done it once, I I sort of know what I've done and I still, you know, have to go and try various things to get it to work more and more. So um, I'm going to bring that up in brightness. There we go. Get a nice bright spot there. There we go. Now it's now it's started really starting to glow. And there's definitely more highlighting work and things I need to do on this image as well, but it's getting the color tones um, and just broadly in the right spot. So, um, you know, one of the things I think I'm going to do is I'm going to go to this cloud. I'm working on the cloud layer right there. You can see turn on and off. I'm going to make a layer mask really quick and I'm going to set my paintbrush to black and I was going to go to a soft brush but much smaller um, that's too small I just don't like this hard edge I've got on the one cloud so I'm just going to use my paintbrush sort of paint that away again because it was soft brush and almost like blended away and just sort of smooths out now the top I, I sort of like uh, maybe maybe a little bit of brushing around some of these edges can work. I can do the same for this one, just a layer mask, just just knocking off some of the hard hard spots, but against the sky, I want it to work there. So I'm just using my eye and just using 
clipping mask and a very big brush that's that's soft edge just to blend these things together you know just quick techniques there to get it all to work smoothly like that so so we get we get those colors in um you know i think the next thing i actually did is i went down uh, on a lower layer back down onto my background because i did want to do i'm going to make a new layer i'm going to take this brown color that i've been using and i'm going to get this nice and big here and nope not big enough i'm just going to do the same thing here a little bit tiny little bit bigger there we go sort of paint in a brown spot over to the edge like that let that bottom corner be pretty dark there that's obviously too too bright but i can sort of soften that down just getting a blend of colors here getting some things all tonally working together just like that um and i need to do i think i ended up giving the tonal color to the starship as well separately than the background so let me work on that now so i'm going to go up to the starship here layer oops did not mean to turn it off there i'm going to actually put it um below the light layer because um, i want those to glow on top and i'm just going to fill this with that same brown color that I used before. There we go. Uh, the, I'll set it to color, of course, to give it that brown color. And this is actually where I toned it way down. I sort of did that um, before on the other thing. But you can see just, just tonally starts to bring those browns into the starship as well, just like that. So tonally this is set. But you can still see it's sort of flat in a way. So the next thing I did is I added a lot of highlighting to the planets, uh, the moon, and the starship itself to, to adjust for this sort of bright spot here in the center. So we'll get working on that. As I sort of began to work on the highlighting, and there's, again, several things I do. One of the things I noticed is I wasn't quite happy about this light glowing off the top of here because it actually gets cropped out through this clipping mask right here. So what I ended up doing is I actually took this layer and I realized I could pull this right on top it doesn't even have to be in there uh, and that comes back and that's because this is set to to lighten so it removes all the black so so this was sort of a, a mini highlight task there but otherwise what I did is I really just did sort of again artistic tones uh, on these things and paint used paintbrush and things to, to move things around and brighten now this paintbrush I have of course is way too big and I want I want to be painting white because I'm going to do highlighting but the sort of soft brush again still works um, so I'm just going to select a size you know decently big but uh, you know something like that maybe a little tiny bit bigger I think we'll see we'll see what happens I'll make a new layer for this and I, I basically I know I'm just going to paint on a bright spot here to, to be as if it's reflecting this guy off here. I'll probably blur that a little bit actually. So filter, blur, Gaussian blur, something like that. There we go. And um, let's change the transparency on this as well. You know, something like that, just to give a nice bright spot there. Starts to really read this thing in as, as an image. And I have to do that again to the planet and moon. So I'm going to come down to my planet layers. And I think what I did for this, probably a few things here, but I'm going to, I'm going to start with the earth. And if I go and do the uh, color dodge tool, um, can I get this to brighten at all? I can a little bit. Uh, you can partly, probably barely see it. So let me uh, see if I can get the exposure right higher if you can see if i keep changing this it's it is getting higher um, i'm using the small paintbrush now but i'm gonna i'm actually gonna significantly up this paintbrush size here as i work and so we can see just where i'm painting it you can see it's getting brighter and i'm doing it in association with where that sun is located here and it's just getting the highlights of that spot so that i can come down and play with it a little bit and I think what I ended up doing too on this guy, so that, that brightened it up, but the rest of it was still sort of flat. So if I make a new layer above the earth, but um, and sort of control click that same shape, 
let's I'll set a black to white gradient. And I want linear gradient, not radial. So I'll switch that back to sort of go like that. Uh, that's backwards. Let's uncheck reverse here. Do something like that. And set the blending modes. It's like multiply just to darken up that bottom corner there. And you can play with the transparency. I sort of like that that dark. I think that's working for me. But it really brings out the bright spot sort of up up top there. So it makes it darker, makes it feel more round. And we basically have to do the same sort of things with the moon. You can probably actually, you know what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make another I'm gonna make another layer in this planet before I move on. I'm gonna go to my paintbrush. Um I'll try doing this and I'm actually going to paint white a white edge right here and just sort of highlight this down being a little messy I could probably fade that out a little bit but that's okay I'll just do this being a little messy because I'll go in and delete this here in a second so you, so watch this I'm going to select on the earth again to get that line and shift inverse and hit delete just so it cleans up that line to match the earth and then um, we can make this as transparent or not as we want, maybe blur it out a little bit, really give the edge and def define the earth just like that. I'm gonna do end up doing the same thing with, with the moon as well. So I'm gonna come up here, make a new layer. Actually, yes, yeah, so I'm gonna make a new layer and it's definitely too dark. I could probably all lighten it. So why don't I go ahead and just fill it all white. I'm gonna do this in steps. Again, could you do this all in one, one move perhaps, but if I filled it all white, give it transparency, just, I don't want it to be as light as the planet to give it give it depth, but I just thought it was just generally too dark. This is a little bit of transparency there, just like that. And then um, what I'm gonna do is, again, could I do it, this all is one layer, probably. Uh, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select the planet again and go to gradient. Uh, I'm gonna go white to transparent in this case. And just, oops, let me reverse that. I, I never know, obviously I never know the reverse directions, but there we go, just to give it, give it a bright spot on that side. So there's, there's two layers of whitening on this moon right now, just for starting out. Again, I don't want a lot on it, just a little bit. I wonder if I turn that off and turn this up. You know, again, I'm still just playing something like that. Um, and you can see that the moon edge is still sort of hard to read. The, the key for this is one more layer of white. I actually tab this one off. I might turn it on. We'll see how it goes. Um, but the top one, it, it's the same edge. So I'm going to go to my paintbrush and use white. Um, and the paintbrush has to be pretty small in this case. Not, not that small, I guess. Uh, do, 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 do. We'll, we'll try this. What I'm going to do is I'm going to purposely come off the moon like this and then come on just like this and come around and then come off the moon again like that. And when I select the moon and shift inverse and delete, you can see what it does. It sort of makes it look like it's sort of skinny coming out. And it is, it's really this hard edge that lets the moon sort of read. And I came back and I think I filled in some of these spots and I wasn't afraid to sort of make a bright spot like that as needed. Is it a crater? Is it who knows what? You know, um, it just meant to be, I can keep that pretty bright, bright. And actually what I might do is I might blur this. Filter, blur, Gaussian blur. Oh yeah, look at that. Too much blurred, but we can see that the effect is working pretty well. Something like that. Really almost has this sort of reflection. I probably blurred it a little too much there. In fact, if I were, were smart, what I might do is I might need another layer here and do the same thing right around just that edge there um, to reinforce that edge a little bit. So select the moon, select inverse. Delete, there we go, bright spot, but with the blur, you know, happening around it. And and we could come through, I think, again, if I were really doing this, I think I should now need to 
turn this gradient layer on to give it more depth, feel more, more spherical as needed. The whole thing, <sighs> I'm trying to think, almost feels, does it feel too bright now? You know, I'm just going to go back and forth. What happens if I make another layer, but this time fill it black? It's purposely under the bright spot. I don't know if I want it to be black or if I want it to be gray, but we'll see what happens. See, these are the little steps that I don't remember exactly everything I did. So we'll fill it all. We'll fill we'll figure it out. You just play or play around until you get what you like. And it's it's coming along. It's too dark now. And like what happens if I switch layers? Oh that that's not bad. Get a nice dark. Like I'm trying to get the corner dark, right? But still get the reflection. So I'm gonna say that's good again. And honestly, when I did this first time, I probably spent how long just playing with these bunch of little layers to get it just the contrast that I wanted to do, but that'll be too boring. So we certainly get the the idea here. Um, now that I've got sort of the highlighting on the elements working and the tonal quality, the, the image was nearly done, except for what I did do is I did do a few tricks at the end just to to really sort of fully bring it home so we'll move on to these finalized touches now okay so for a lot of the finalized touches i want to work on this holistically as an image rather than all the layers so the way way i like to work of course i don't want to lose all these layers because i could tweak them at any time as i did when i was really doing this but what i do is i i basically just go to image sorry i go to layer uh and i go to flatten image Say so, yeah, discard all my layers or hidden layers for now. I just get get one image here, and I'm just gonna select everything and copy, Control C. And I'm gonna go to new and paste it into a new layer just for safekeeping. Clipboard was the size, so there we go. It's it's all on one layer. Now the thing I want to do is I'm gonna come back to my original work, and I want to undo Control Z, you know, to get back to all my layers. Um, and I want to come up to the top, uh, and now I can paste in this whole image as single. So we can see the rest we blocked out. We're gonna we're gonna uh, use these original layers in the end, but um, we're gonna do some things to these layers. We're gonna do a few things to them actually. So one thing I decided to do, well, this is a bright spot here. You know, perhaps there should be like a lens flare that sort of always looks interesting. So we'll go to filter, render, lens flare. And, um, I sort of figured, okay, it was probably reflecting off that bright spot that I have right here. You can sort of see it here and actually sort of put the circles pretty close to the sun. So I thought that was pretty good. And I, so I said, okay, we have this. Of course, it's it's way too bright. So, so you know, if I come down and say, well, maybe if I just set it to something like color, and, you know, change the transparency as needed. Maybe I'll go to normal, actually. Just change the transparency as needed. So we get a little bit of a bright spot there. You get a little bit of these rings in this in the center. It just sort of looks cool without being in your face, but I think it think it really helps. And I, I, I really just ended up playing around. Let's see, where did I save that? Here we go. Here's the original image um, that's flattened. So I need to go back here because because I'm gonna just copy this again, the same flattened image, and come over to my working file and paste it in again. Now I know I ended up pulling it this layer below lights. But uh, again, I tried many different things, but what I settled on was I went to filter, uh, filter gallery, and I went to grain, and I went to vertical grain, and you can see the settings. I'm gonna assume these are the settings I used and just say, okay. We can see I got like this sort of stripiness to it, um, which I'm just gonna turn the transparency way down on you know, something like that, just adds a little bit of texture to the image and even highlights, it brought up the highlights a little bit in the image. It blended the background together just a bit. Um, and I don't know, I just like the texture. I thought in some ways, maybe I'm reading into it, maybe it's almost like we're almost looking through a screen, like maybe we're, we're in another starship or spaceship and we're looking at a projection screen to see this image. That's why it's got sort of like the lines, it's, I don't know, sort of like the matrixy kind of sci-fi look. It just, it, again, whatever you wanna interpret it, you I think it allows the viewer to, to interpret um, and, uh, 
you know, but visually it adds a texture that just makes it look a little bit nicer. And then finally, just, you know, compositionally, what I did is I just made the edges darker because that always helps sort of if it's a basic comp composition thing. So I'm going to set my foreground layer to black and I'm going to go to gradient and I'm going to go black to transparent just like this. I'm basically going to just, just sort of take a straight line off the top. Why do I keep doing that? I have reverse set. I got to uncheck reverse. Anyway, whatever. We'll just go through. We'll just sort of set the black. That might not have been quite long enough, but we'll do it that way. For now, come off the side just like this. Come off the bottom, however tall you want it to be. Come off the left hand side just like that to, to sort of blacken the edges a little bit. Um, I think I ended up actually taking sort of a a mask on this layer. I wanted to keep this stuff sort of brighter down here. So I just sort of threw in an oval. Uh, and I'm going to fill this oval black. I know that's because the layer mask, so black will remove it. Right, of course, it's it's hard edged here. So we're going to do the same thing on this guy at the layer mask that we've done with all of our hard edges, which is go to filter, blur, Gaussian blur. Set it pretty high. So it sort of fades away, but keeps that that punch line, which is that house back there, right? Th these houses are the punch line, so I didn't want to darken those too much. So just just turn that off a little bit from the black edges, and uh, essentially that's how I made this drawing. I did do a little. I think I did a few little things to finish up too. I actually made a new layer up top because this star sort of oh that's sort of distracting. So I think I like clone stamp that. Something like that out of there. Where's my clone stamper? Here it is. It's up here. Um, see what happens. Select close. Is clone stamp that guy right out of existence just like that? You know, and I might have picked a few other stars. I think I got rid of and. Uh, of various other elements, but that's essentially the drawing. You know, again, when I was done with this, this isn't as good as my final one. Why don't I go pull that up right now, actually? So here's actually the original one. We can see it's not identical. You can see the colors are slightly shifted. The tones and highlights are, are probably arguably a little better here. And it's and it's not that I did them better the first time. It's I literally did all the steps that we just saw on my image. And then I went back and adjusted. I said, okay, this needs to be brighter. This needs to be darker. This needs to have less color in it. This needs to have a great, whatever those, all the layers. There's no different layers than I just showed you how to do. It's just, I just, adjusted their transparency or, you know, changed the levels to get higher brightness or contrast or, you know, all those sorts of things played, played with the color, um, you know, hue, saturation, all those effects that you can sort of get there just to bring this together a little bit stronger. And you can see ultimately all it really is, is, is not too bad, a pretty simple Photoshop techniques. It's just a lot of them, like layer on top of layer on top of layer, shifting color, shifting tone, uh, adding texture, adding detail to all the elements uh, individually, and then all the elements holistically. And so don't be afraid to experiment. That's how I got to this drawing, you know, um, is just trying this, trying that, throwing out this layer, trying something else, throwing something else on top of it. Uh, it's just trial and error. You have a vision in your head and you, you just try to get there and uh, and ultimately have fun. And that's what this drawing was about. It was about having fun, trying to make something a little, little humorous. And hopefully you, A, enjoyed it, and B, maybe learned something uh, on uh, how to draw it yourself. So good luck, have fun, and keep making great drawings.